Yeah, so this is the creator and owner of Love Letters to Greece. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Vasily Billy Chrysahos. Vasilius Chrysahos. Some people call me Billy. Some people call you Billy. But you got to really know him well, though, to call him Billy. This is George Selinski. We uh, usually do our historical educational videos from the Greek and Russian club, our, our sister Facebook page. But uh, now we're going to do some from here, Love Letters to Greece, for all of you out there that want to learn some things that are happening in current events right now that concern all of us. That's correct. All the Orthodox. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, Bill I, Hellenes and everybody out there. And who wouldn't know about the uh, great cathedral, Hagia Sophia, that uh, uh, is currently a subject of a lot of attention, as we all know. That's right. So we're going to get uh, right to the subject of uh, Hagia Sophia. I know it's the hottest thing right now, especially for our circle of, of, of people. Uh, most Americans won't even know what that means. But Hagia uh, Sophia is uh, one of the greatest uh, Christian cathedrals uh, ever created in um, the Byzantine Empire in the city of Constantinople. And that is all now in the modern country of Turkey. Uh, and the city is called Istanbul now. So there are a lot of uh, events, both political and ideological, that are happening with this uh, government that's... Uh, basically a dictatorship that's running Turkey right now. And they are changing the status of this wonderful ancient cathedral. And we're gonna go into a few details about you know who built it and uh, what it means, called Hagia Sophia. Uh, Which holy means exactly, wisdom. holy wisdom, holy right? Wisdom. It's not Saint Sophia or uh, anything yes. like that. Right, that's an important distinction. So, okay. so never, never, and we all make this mistake sometimes, you know, obviously. Uh, I've actually made it myself, so I, <laughs> I noticed that last week. <laughs> <laughs> I've done this myself, but uh, yes. uh, when, you, when you see professors especially and experts talking about this specific cathedral called Hagia Sophia, and they refer to it as Saint Sophia, I would just like turn the page and walk away because they don't know what they're talking about. Then it's not about a saint, and right. it's not about Saint Sophia, which is a different saint. Right, right, right. This is about uh, the actual Theotokos, the the mother of God, and 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 what it contains is the holy wisdom of God. That's right. that's what I guess Sophia means. So, uh, well, let's just let's just mention also that what you're going to be doing a lecture on the Byzantium soon. And we're going to be this. This is all going to be a part of that lecture. It's an online lecture, so that's right. We're going to plug in some of our uh, actually interesting things that are relating to all these these burning issues. And uh, my, my upcoming lecture with uh, AHEPA, uh, the American Hellenic Educational Progressive Association, which uh, I'm also part of. I'm the director of culture and arts for District Six, which is all of New York, the Empire State. Over twenty chapters, which I've done lectures uh, and presentations with. Uh, the Hempstead chapter of Ahepa Saint, um, in St. Paul's, it's called the Cassis uh, chapter, uh, under the president Anastasio Stambolis, a good friend. Um, we are doing a, a presentation on a, an introduction to Byzantium. So they, they had asked me, uh, I had done a few years ago, uh, something called Byzantium for Beginners with uh, the, a Greek uh, literature book club with my good friend Jeannie Kouros and some other professors and uh, educators at the cathedral, the main uh, church in Manhattan with Father John Vlachos. The Holy Trinity. Holy Trinity, yeah. Cathedral on 74th Street. I've been there plenty of times. The, the main cathedral. We had done uh, this big um, uh, presentation lecture series uh, on, on the Byzantine for Beginners. And a good friend that passed away, Daniel Parovano. Oh, yeah. God rest his soul. He's a great guy. He's a great guy, yes. Who was also a cantor, a professor. Um, a wonderful person and uh, they wanted to redo this uh, me to redo you know my portion and a, and a portion of this lecture and I and I I've been meaning to do it I just recently had done a lecture for St. Nicholas of Flushing in the Hellenic Cultural Society which I belong to about Byzantium's Macedonian dynasty mm -hmm. which was between yep. 867 AD and 1056 or so and um, with a small introduction of Byzantium that I had done from back then and the historical role of Macedonia so that was a more specific thing about the Macedonian dynasty. This is going to be something very general uh, and very basic, about half an hour, about introducing what Byzantium is. Because uh, we always talk about the tragedy and the end of, of the fall, which actually is going to lead us to our conversation again now with what, right. what happened right. to right. Sophia. But, uh, you know, there's a beginning. It's an, it's an empire that lasted 1,100 years, starting with Constantine the Great in 338 AD. All right, and that's this Thursday, um, July 30th, which is also my birthday. 
I'm not gonna be a thousand years old, I'll be 45. And um, it's gonna be online, uh, go to, I believe it's a go to meeting. Uh, everything is gonna be on an event page we have made on Facebook. Right, there's a that page, you can already check it out, it's there, so you can it's log in there Byzantium. and get all the details. So the AHEPA of Hempstead Cassis chapter is hosting it, and it's the My Hellenic History series, which is uh, the next step I'm gonna introduce uh, that's part of our Patreon uh, page. But uh, one second, the... Uh, yeah, we'll get there in a we'll minute. We'll get there in a minute, but this, this specific introduction of Byzantium is this Thursday, July 30th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can uh, log log in with information that's gonna be in the Facebook event page. Uh, there's some codes you just uh, see it, and then it will also be posted afterwards. And this will become also another lecture uh, once it's edited for our Patreon page, which is the next uh, item that we're discussing here. The Patreon page was created um, basically called the Hellenic History Series, and it uh, relates to everything that's with, with Greek history, mythology, and uh, issues relating to, to those things, with uh, the goal of producing animated historical videos, like documentary-style right. videos, like uh, you see Kings and Generals and, uh, and other, uh, other Patreon uh, documentary-style uh, organizations that do those kind of historical videos, and we want to do ours with... Uh, you know our spin in a way we, we promote Greek history and, and mythology as well uh, and it has the videos it's gonna have an illustrated history book which I'm currently writing and illustrating that's with mythology and Greek history figures from ancient medieval the revolution and, and modern and even pop stars and um, music my, my band Porfira's new album which is all dedicated to Greek history and mythology is coming out and uh, and some film projects. So this is going to be it's the hub for everything that we're doing with the Greek and Russian club, with Love Letters to Greece, with uh, Porfira and all that stuff, and my educational lectures. So that's Patreon, and it's called Hellenic History Series. The links are also the Love Letters to Greece and the, and, the, and its Facebook event page. Um, and there's a f also a fundraiser we're we're doing. I'm doing uh, for my birthday. That's going to the Porfira Foundation. That's part right. of the Patreon. That's also listed on the this event page. So next Thursday, we're launching officially the Patreon Hellenic History series uh, page through the, my lecture, Introduction to Byzantium, which will also be featured uh, down the line in Patreon as well with an edited uh, online version. Uh, in this lecture, actually, you'll be able to see present uh, slides as well. The, it's cool. The technology now, you can do your online Zoom or whatever have you lecture and also show pictures and slides as well. So you'll be able to see both. It's not, sure. it's not just me talking. You're going to see visual uh, Visual aids, pictures, slides, and there's gonna be Q and A Q&A afterwards, so people will be able to ask questions and tell people to join this. And uh, you know, that's the whole thing. Anybody could um, just log in and watch. Like, yes, yeah, it will be not, just, uh, it's not just, not just a have uh, the members. Yeah, it would be like open. That. So everybody. yeah, please tell your friends about it. Uh, you know, I've known Billy for many years. He knows a lot. You can ask him questions. He's you know he's quite knowledgeable. So um, so anyway, let's talk about let's talk about the main crux of what we need to discuss here today. I you know I knew what Hagia Sophia was about because uh, I'm Russian, and you know when you're Russian, your razor taught about Orthodox Christianity and how it all started. And for us, it all started with Saint Vladimir's conversion, uh, you know, to uh, you know uh, to Orthodoxy, which happened uh, by way of uh, his wife, who was uh, a Byzantine Greek uh, princess. Anna Porfirogenita. Anna Porfirogenita, which Billy wrote an entire rock opera about, by the way. That uh, went to Carnegie Hall of Broadway. Yeah, so and that's, a, that's why the music is project. part of, of the history, Hellenic history series, and why Porfira is very important. Absolutely. Yeah. So basically, I mean, I, I knew that it was always, you know, the grandest of church of St. Vladimir was, you know, didn't know whether he was on heaven or earth. And, you know, as a Russian, you were always told that one of the hopes of, you know, Orthodox civilization is to uh, free. Uh, you know, Constantinople, Free Hagia Sophia, uh, you know, as obviously being the, uh, you know, the central symbol of that. And, you know, that's, that's what you're always taught as a kid, you know, that, that was how I was raised. So I knew what it was about, but a lot of people don't kind of get it. I mean, I've heard people say that, well, you know, Hagia Sophia was a mosque, and sometimes they think that it was built as a mosque, which is crazy. It wasn't. It was built way before Islam even started as a religion, actually. So this is what's worrisome, and this is distressing events that are happening right now. There's even fake um what would you call it like uh 
not just fake news. Uh, fake history. Well, like the fake falsified history. history right? the, there, are, there are bills there are, and, uh, and receipts that are circulating on the internet that the Mehmet the Conqueror bought <laughs> a yes of yeah, blood from, yeah. from the monks, from the arch, yeah, you know, charged from the arch archbishop. Card, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the patriarch, you know, it's just crazy stuff. And, and people believe there were, you know, ancient typewriters that the Turks had in <laughs> 1453 that were making well, a sale. Purchase. There's a misappropriation and a distortion of history. And that's not uncommon if you're an Orthodox Christian. You know, it's tough because... Because, you know, it's not like we have a big lobby here in America and, you know, uh, we can't, we can't, we can't really get our point of view across a lot of times. So that's a troublesome thing. And other people write the history for us. I mean, as a Russian, I can tell you too, people have written our history in the craziest ways. And uh, interestingly enough, you know, they agree actually sometimes with uh, the Soviet version of history. Uh, because that kind of makes, you know, pre-revolutionary Russia look bad and all this other stuff. So it's very well familiar to me, too, as an Orthodox Christian. We have a hard time getting our, uh, getting our point of view across here in the States and, you know, and even in, in, in a lot of the world. But, um, but again, a lot of people don't know stuff. And I think why, let's, let's just try to ask, answer this question. Why is this a bad thing? Or, you know, it sounds like, okay, well, it was a mosque. Then, you know, then it was not for a while. It was an international. It never came back to being an Orthodox Christian church, that we know. But, uh, yes, this originally started as an Orthodox Christian church for many, 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 many years. It was an Orthodox Christian church. And now, all of a sudden, uh, it was converted to a mosque when uh, Mehmet the Conqueror took Constantinople. Yes. And then, after that, it became, uh, you know, when Ataturk uh, came to power, Ataturk kind of positioned himself as this, you know, modern secular leader. Well, you know, that's a... That's a very, you know, that's, that's a hot subject in itself because you can ask certainly the Orthodox Christians that lived in Turkey at the time how they felt about that, but we won't go into that right now. But bottom line is that it was made into this kind of more of an international space. It became a UNESCO protected heritage site. And now that's all of a right. sudden the new leader of Turkey, not new leader, he's been the leader for quite a while now, but uh, this guy decides, well... I'm, you know, I'm, you know, it's like I, I'm going to make an executive decision and turn this into a mosque now. Uh, so basically reversing the decision that Ataturk did. And yeah, okay, Erdogan doesn't really position himself as a secular leader, uh, you know, but it, whatever. The bottom line is that he decided to go in this direction now. So let's, a, let's answer this question that so many people have. Why is this bad? You know, why is it like, who cares? You know, it's not an Orthodox church. Uh, so what, anyway, it was just a museum and now it's a mosque. Well, these people are praying so there it's now. It's a different country. You know, it's a mosque yeah, so country. why would you say, like, you know, as an Orthodox Christian, as a, as a person, you know, as a Hellene, what would you say about that? Well, if anybody that's uh, taken a single Byzantine history class or looked at a picture of what a Byzantine is or what the Byzantine Empire is, it's basically the picture of a Yasufya representing the 1100 years of Byzantium. 1100 years, 1100. folks. That's a very long time. It was completed in 537 AD by the Emperor Justinian. Right. Right. So it began about 532 uh, and then it was completed in 537. It was built originally by the son of Constantine the Great uh, sometime in the late 4th uh, fourth, uh, century. Um, and it was burned a couple of times. And then when Justinian made it this grand uh, symbol of, of, of the empire because he reconquered the parts of the Western uh, Roman Empire that had fallen right. with his uh, general Belisarius, you know, he was very religious. Uh, and with uh, the Empress Theodora, they built this monument to, to, to the holy wisdom of God. And um, it lasted until... Uh, the Crusaders, when they sacked it in 1204, the Latin Crusaders, and they converted it into a, a Catholic church for, for a while, for right. uh, 1261 when it was reconquered back by the Paleologos, a uh, new dynasty that was going to take over Constantinople. And then it, it uh, fell to the Turks when Mehmet the Conqueror, as you mentioned earlier, conquered Constantinople and uh, most of the Balkans in 1453. So... Immediately was uh, made into a mosque, the, the, the first and grandest mosque of the Ottoman Turks in, in the city of uh, Constantinople. And that was very symbolic because that was the their whole idea of, of, of conquest was to conquer Hagia Sophia in Constantinople. All right, it was kind of so, to say, I got you finally. I yeah. finally rubbed out the Byzantine Empire so, entirely. It was now, finished. Now we will take you know, it. Now we're, time. yeah, exactly right. So that was like their way of saying, that was their way of basically waving the flag over the capital in a sense. Yes, and it was, it was not bought, that. it was not purchased. It was three days of pillaging, 
looting, slaughtering, and raping, and then basically right. converting it, put, adding the minarets eventually, the four large minarets. And Wiping out the uh, frescoes. Yes, plastering all the right. frescoes, all the icons, destroying them, uh, whitewashing everything, history basically. And uh, eventually as the Ottoman Empire began to collapse and then this new government took over uh, violently in the uh, 1920s, uh, 22 of Mustafa Kemal Turk and the Young Turk movement. They made this modern Turkey that uh, tried to erase uh, the sultans and, and, and create a new supposedly secular uh, country that basically... EU was, ready. EU ready from 1922, <laughs> right? They only had yeah. to basically become secular by exterminating the three million Christians that were living in, in that country. Uh, well, that's why, I, that's why I mentioned that Ataturk has this false yeah. reputation as being the progressive modern... There's nothing uh, democratic, you know, progressive yeah. about, about yeah, Turkey. Not exactly right. You know, three million yeah. Christian, over three million, three and a half million Christians died. Uh, Armenians, Greeks, and Assyrians who are still suffering in those places. Right, right. And as the last hope, eventually when uh, the, uh, our patriarchate uh, was, was still there and was left to, to become part, you know, to administer... Uh, through the Ottoman Empire and all that stuff, it, it was still there. But by the time of, uh, after the 50s, the population of the Greeks of Constantinople, <clears throat> till now, are like 2,000 people from about a quarter of a million that used to live there. And that's after there was a specific pogrom, uh, or, you know, uh, basically a massacre in the 1950s, right? And basically that was... <clears throat> That was kind of the last straw. That at that point, it just really became a very small group of people, and and you know now we're looking at their descendants essentially. Uh, so live there. Why are we giving you this background? Because obviously you need to understand why this is important to all right. of Greeks and, and Christians and Orthodox Christians, because this was their their center of their universe. It was a Hagia Sophia, and it was in Constantinople. Right. Uh, the most magnificent, probably, Christian cathedral ever created, I would say. I mean, you know, it was. Could, at least in the Eastern Christian world. I mean, you know, you could b debate about, you know, the basilica I, and everything. I, I, but until the 1300s, it, 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 didn't it, it didn't have was the equals. biggest one. It didn't now. have any equals. Yeah, it was just it was just a feat of architecture that uh, I think you still would have a hard time imagining. A thousand today. years. Over yes. a, imagine over a millennium. This is the, the later part of modern history. Right. This place was so advanced so mystical and so magical that this is in a, in a if you believe in the bible and especially the old testament and the new testament when they proclaim that it will be a period that god will come for a thousand years and, and live on earth this right. is where he lived yeah it, this it would feel comes, like that uh, comes to the uh, russian yeah. story as well uh when the emissaries of vladimir as you mentioned uh came to follow the and, and, and see the religions of the world because it was time for the for the Kievan Rus to find their religion for themselves to become civilized. When they enter Hagia Sophia, they said this is the, the greatest place that we've ever seen. This is where God lives. This is uh, where yeah. Noah of this place. And even in the time of the, the, the later Turks, uh, up until at the Turk, this was an awe-inspiring building, even though it was all white clean. Uh, I'm going to mention the architects when it's my lecture. There's more information about it. Yes, yeah. we're not going to give you the whole thing details. here. Yeah. Yeah. you got to log in, man. You but, uh, I, you know, we can say the names. Uh, uh, they were actually basically scientist architects. This, is, this was just not an architectural. This was the first time in uh, architectural history that a dome of, of such magnitude was, was created that can float and would not... Uh, break or, or fall because remember Greece and what, what Asia Minor and Anatolia is modern Turkey now they're in the fault zones a lot of seismic activities seismic there, activities you know. are constantly happening there and, and if something is not built to the utmost uh, uh, with the utmost uh, efficiency to uh, to become earthquake proof it right. will fall and this is a giant building and by the way this is a field that's still being researched constantly and nobody knows how they did it and, they and, have yeah, an idea this could be like a miracle one of the miracles that you know of its time yeah uh, from that standpoint was anthemius of trellis and uh isidoro miletus to two science scientist architects from asia minor which if you google them in wikipedia and the places of birth right now they'll say they were like uh you know hellenic roman or you know, Byzantine cities that they lived in it means nothing because they're all Greek cities. But that's that's the confusion you will see if you try to research a lot of information on, on Wikipedia or the internet, especially like Hagia Sophia, you're going to see that they say it's a mosque. So right. as we said, Ataturk uh, 
replaced, uh, actually got rid of the, the mosque status and made it into a museum because he realized he'd probably make a few more bucks from the, you know, survivors. Yeah. He, was he, he, yeah, he was very pragmatic. Yeah, uh, he was very pragmatic. He killed, and, and he was actually into this uh, secularizing of the, of the state, so the religion was kind of a, a no-no, Islam included. He got rid of the uh, Arabic letters, the Greek letters, made Latin, and basically right. religion was, uh, you know, cut short. So the church mosque became a museum. It's been a museum until now. In the 80s, became a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, we're being told we're in a 20-minute mark. I hope we're not boring you. We'll, we'll keep a few minutes in this interesting conversation that we're having. And uh, from the UNESCO World Heritage Site, that means it has a special status. Only a few buildings and places on the planet have a UNESCO World Heritage uh, status. Right. And um, this uh, dictator that's in Turkey now, Erdogan, basically that's what he is. He's jailed all the journalists. He has is recreating this neo-Ottoman empire with movies that his government creates every day, state, state propaganda, uh, basically are about the fall of Constantinople and how the Turks conquered Constantinople. Yeah, and like the Byzantine it's a cool empire. thing to have yeah, done. They have, they have uh, series, uh, soap operas, you know, movies of how cool the Turks were and how, you know, crooked and corrupt the Byzantine and the Greeks yeah. were. You they know, just had to get rid of them. Yeah, <laughs> there were such, you know, they liberated all the such Christians. Such a scourge on the land. What did they ever contribute to civilization? Nothing. Yeah, no, it's like, so basically their point uh, of view is they liberated all the, all the Christians from the Byzantines. You know, yeah, they weird liberated name them. Those great. Yeah. And uh, they, they, they freed them and they made, uh, you know... <laughs> The, the Byzantine civilization better because they got rid of it and it made the Ottoman. Yeah, I don't know apart. what you guys were thinking in 1821. You lost the best thing you ever had, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they're trying yeah. to erase history uh, through the media, through actual invasions. Right. They're, they're invading you know, Libya, Syria, right. Iraq. You know, they're drilling offshore for gas in uh, Cyprus and in Greek waters next to Crete. So, uh, releasing illegal immigrants in the borders of Greece, basically flooding Greece. It's a basic war, I mean, if we're going to look at it, realistically speaking, right? Yeah. It's always a threat of it getting hot. That's right. And it's never really abating. You know? So, why is Hagia Sophia important? Why is this becoming a mosque again important? And why you should care? That's right. Why do you think? Well, I think it's, I think you mentioned a lot of points right there and then. It's a symbolic turning turning um turning against shall we say the christian culture of the region and it's basically another way of this uh, of erdogan saying hey you know what i will do what i want and i don't care what anybody else thinks and uh i mean he's doing it obviously for political purposes in his own country he's losing a lot of money a lot of soldiers you know, died in these wars and he's trying to yeah there's always take there's, istanbul right. which he lost in the previous elections when right. he held a coup so he's trying to save face by saying, look what I'm doing for you. I'm, I'm making this into a mosque again. It's prestigious for us. Right. Because I've been, I've been to Turkey twice. I've been to Constantinople twice. Mm -hmm. And it's very disheartening that, yeah. that as, a, as, a, as a Christian uh, or as a historian or just as a person that, that believes in humanity, you will go into this place and you're gonna, you see it become something that it's not. I mean, this was such a, a sacred place for Christians. It, it was built just to be a Christian cathedral, nothing else. This exactly. This is not, not a building a that can become a... Multi-purpose, uh, yeah, uh, you know, not, thing. I mean, I think we agree that it's a tall order to expect any leader there to turn it back into a church. It would be the right thing to do, I think. But unfortunately, you know, the best I think that you could hope for is some kind of an interfaith arrangement. And kind of the way it was wasn't exactly that, but it was at least better than the alternative of going to the other extreme which he's done right now so it's it's a very it's a very difficult position i'll say this much too i want to just mention this as a russian you know i know that you know right now the russian orthodox church and the ecumenical patriarch could have a lot of issues and um you know it's a difficult time but i was very glad that a lot of russian orthodox christians including the russian orthodox church and even you know very high levels in the russian government expressed their displeasure at this and, uh, you know, I mean, obviously Russia's not going to go to war with Turkey over this. That's, that's going to tear Russia apart right now. Turkey's the uh, second largest uh, it's a NATO power country in NATO. Too. And a NATO it's country. a NATO country, too. So, I mean, you know, so obviously... Fellow Greeks, whenever you make these comments yeah. about why Turkey, uh, Russia should not, you know, say more to, to Turkey, I mean, think about what you're saying. That would be World War Three. It would be, first of church. all, and the other yeah, problem yeah. is, of course, unfortunately, right now... What do they have to gain out of that? Unfortunately, right now, also, it's not it's not a secret that, you know, the Euro-Atlantic bloc is not exactly very pro-Russian right now, 
and that forces Russia into a very difficult geopolitical position. It has to kind of try to find a way of finding some kind of balance in the region, you know, in the Middle East where it's involved. And you can't just totally cancel out any kind of relation, you know, with Turkey, unfortunately. I mean, and I'm, and I'm going to be very honest, too. I think most, most Russians, including obviously the people in the government, take no pleasure uh, at Erdogan in any way. Mm. Um, that's not a person they consider to be a real ally or a friend. It's just a person that they occasionally do business with. Well, America not... has to do business with them. We yeah, and, they're, 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 and they've been selling. They've yeah. been selling arms to you know. America's unfortunately been selling arms all the time to Turkey. Whatever president is is, is in power, right? right whatever matter, president for Turkey. So you got to be fair. Our tax money goes to 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 weapons. Absolutely. Uh, manufacturing in Turkey. I mean that that's the number three tax recipient of our, our yeah. weapons and 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 oil illegal oil that's being siphoned from Turkey that uh, backed Islamic State in Syria, Absolutely. in Kurdish areas, in Christian areas, ancient Greek Christian areas in, in Antioch region where our patriarchate is also, that, that's where these wars are happening and that, there's oil there yeah. and they're basically trying to genocide again the people, that, the Yazidis and the other Christians and, right. and Kurds that were helping them. Get rid of them there. I mean, so. it's crazy that over all these years, these processes of elimination of the Christian population in the Middle East are still ongoing very actively. We, and we, we will talk another day of very, how not you know, everybody in the Middle East is Arab. You know, there are also indigenous people that were Greek and Armenians and Assyrians that are living there that are, you know, mm -hmm. a type of Caucasian people, not European, you know. The Arabs came a little bit later. And there's also Arabs and Jews there. Yeah. So it's not just an Arab Muslim area that will that, that's a very complicated region and turkey has actually you know taken a large chunk of this area as right. a remnant of the of the, of the ottoman empire and, and america sees that as as a as an important place to keep you know iran uh, russia whatever else off you know and unfortunately yeah, they keep so on it's a, a chessboard yeah, yeah it's they a keep chess on relying so, yeah. on on turkey and not greece and then what's our government in greece doing you know, uh, we see that they're also outraged that, <laughs> yeah. you know, you know, I mean, I mean, you gotta do more than say outrage, boycott, but they, they're not because, you know, part of the EU, there's an agenda to appease Turkey. To yeah. Stop everybody's the playing. Immigrants. There's a lot of, yes. there's a lot of yeah. negotiating of bargaining. So it's a very messy field, but you know, obviously I think we can fairly say that, you know, um, not just Greeks, obviously, but Russians and a lot of other Orthodox Christians in this world are not happy about this, putting it mildly. Um, as far as what can be done, that's a much more complicated question. Certainly not something we're going to be able we to discuss have, in a we short have some, webcast. some ideas, but we don't have the answers for that. We don't have the answers yet, and it's an ongoing process. But um, I think, you know, I think one of the most important things is to just learn more about this and know about it so you can be able to have an intelligent conversation about it. And that's why... Uh, you know, one of the main things, the main thing Billy is doing is educating people. So I think uh, that's what that's a good place to kind of leave it. Let's. Um, I would like to as many people as possible to be a part of that lecture that you're going to have uh, this coming week. So uh, I, before I say the lecture, I just want to mention another thing. A lot, a lot of the people in the Muslim world are also against this because mm -hmm. this is also an outrage. And they know it's a symbolic thing that the Turks are doing to right. recreate the Ottoman Empire, which oppressed the Arabs and other peoples as well. Yeah. So Watch lot, Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah, a lot yeah. of Muslim states and people don't like this and are Absolutely. against this. So Absolutely. do not take this that it's a it's a Christian Muslim thing. This is a specific Turkish Islamic fundamentalist uh, thing that's happening right now. That's that's very oppressive and that's that's kind of very bad. Absolutely. Um, and Erdogan is very bad. But th this is. Not even an issue because uh, as Christians, you know, we, we need to actually just learn our history, period, and, and, and be able to appreciate what we had because, you know, unlocking as, as a, the model for the Hellenic history series and, and, and everything that, in Patreon that we, that we say is you got you to gotta, uh, learn from the past to unlock the future. Absolutely. You yeah. know, we can talk about it, yes, Sophia, for hours and hours and the importance of it, but, you know, if you don't know what it is, what it was, what the Byzantine Empire, this Eastern Roman Empire of, of, of the Greek, you know, of Greece was, that influenced the Western world, the, the Arab world, you know, basically uh, the, the Slavic world, you know, we're, we're, we're not going anywhere. So let's learn our, our history, a little bit of the religion, and um, hopefully more people that become educated again they can then get together and come up with ideas that will up appease everybody, you know. This should be something that should be shared with everybody, yeah, you know, regardless if it becomes a church or not, again. Uh, but uh, 
On Thursday, uh, July 30th, look at the Facebook event page here on Love Letters to Greece. It's my introduction to Byzantium uh, presentation with the uh, HEPA of Hempstead Cassis chapter that's, uh, that's organizing it. And it's very important uh, because as also as Americans, we need to understand history. And it's, it's very important. And uh, Byzantium and, and the law uh, and uh, the, the aspect that we took from the Romans and, and the Greeks that became a part of this Roman Empire is what actually came down the, the, the code, democracy, you know, republics, all this stuff was written in Byzantium. And it went to Europe and came to America. You know, right. you know we, don't, we just can't go back to ancient Greece. It all, it all goes back through a chain and it goes through the Byzantine Empire. And, and it's important to understand uh, that it was just not just a Christian empire. It was also something uh, that had to do with our, with our laws, too, and, uh, and, and civilization in general. So uh, Thursday at 7 o'clock, Eastern Time, introduction to Byzantium. Check out our Patreon page, Hellenic History Series. Porphyra for the music and uh, everything is on uh, Love Letters to Greece at the moment. You can see everything there. Also, thank you for joining us. I hope you uh, learned something today and I hope you will all learn something when you join that lecture. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll be doing more broadcasts soon. That's right. Have a good night. Have a good night.